Frederick Engels is an unsung philosopher in the history of communism. As one of the co-authors of the Communist Manifesto along with Karl Marx, the lasting reputation for Engels is that of failure, taking over his family business like a well-mannered capitalist and supporting Karl Marx financially in the later years of their lives. Though most assuredly unfair, Marx is considered the idea man, while Engels is the pocketbook. As social economic theorists, these two figures are oddities among the many existentialists that form the focus of Near Automata. In the game, both the Marx and Engels machine lifeforms are cast in some bit roles. This industrial mining arm is Karl Marx, and two of these arms are wielded by the Engels model machines that we quickly dispatch with a black box explosion. The Engels model machine that we interact with is first met during a mid-game attack on the android resistance, which is also quickly destroyed with the help of our handy dandy Ikaruga flight units. Engels is left limbless and voiceless, and a side quest allows us to repair him just enough to interrogate him about the machine life form's plans. Other than the comical inversion of the preeminence of these two communists, it is clear to see that Yoko Taro does not hold them in high regard. In their lifetime, Marx and Engels only had one opportunity to participate in an attempted revolution, the revolutions of 1848. But, like the machine lifeforms attack on the android resistance, they failed to both influence the revolutions to abandon ideals of constitutional democracy in favor of communism, and they failed to see the revolutions victorious over the authoritarian German state. And historically speaking, the three most prominent communist revolutions that succeeded in global history, those being Joseph Stalin and the USSR, Mao Zedong and the PRC, and Kim Il-sung of North Korea, all immediately resulted in authoritarian dictatorships. These revolutions were also coupled with massive censorship of the arts, criminalizing the descent of the citizenry, large-scale and wanton destruction of cultural artifacts, and the rapid spread of new superstitious belief systems in an attempt to over overthrow and control religious belief systems. The atrocities of these regimes, which conflicted with the values of both liberal democracy and pre-Marx socialism, has led us to the modern day, where democratic socialism attempts to uphold the values of liberalism and socialism, and rejects violence or revolution in favor of economic reform through changing domestic policy over time. With all that said, what the hell does that history have to do with Engels' implementation in in near automata. Well, with each stage of the side quest we complete, we get a bit of information and documentation that show Yoko personifying Engels as he looks back on a history of failure. The first bit of documentation we receive was a manufacturing and shipping ledger for the Engels machine lifeform itself. Though it's a stretch, this could be an allusion to the cotton mill and thread factory Ehrman and Engels, at which Engels worked following the end of the revolutions of 1848. After we repair Engels enough to talk to him, he provides us with his combat data. It lists his kill count at just over 11,000, his largest combo at 234, and total points at just below 10,000, revealing that, yes, the machines are in fact treating this war much like a game, rather than with the seriousness war ought to command. However, it also reveals that this particular Angles was made only just before this attack, had only a single deployment, was remarkably proficient at war, but at the end of the battle, they still lost. And the proxy war between aliens and humans rages on. It is from here that Yoko Taro re-emphasizes one of his most common themes, the irrationality of violence and war. I'm sure at this point you don't need my reminder that the proxy war that sets the stage for this game is itself meaningless, because both humans and aliens have been dead and gone for millennia. Beyond that, humanity in the first Nier had long been replaced by self-aware copies called replicants, and thus there were never any humans to begin with. But do you remember this side quest? 
Here, one of the hedonism bots from the amusement park leads a parade to advocate for the war to be brought to a close. The only problem is that the machine lifeforms, still connected to the network, are going to attack the peaceful protesters because the network doesn't like this message. So they enlist your help to keep the parade safe. How do we accomplish this goal? Through violence, of course. At the end of this quest, the machine realizes the conflict of needing to use violence to advocate for peace. Then there is the Romeo and Juliet stage play, in which simply because the machines make a mistake during the performance about how many Romeos and Juliets there are supposed to be, they decide to kill each other until only one is left standing. This side quest is meant to highlight the irrationality of participating in violence, much like how the Shakespearean play juxtaposed the evil of irrational family feuds against the good of irrational love. What all of these quests have in common is this. Evaluations of Yoko Taro's games have well established Yoko's belief in the simultaneous inevitability and futility of violence. Frederick Engels got his start being inspired by and joining the efforts of a group called the Young Hegelians, who believed in aggressively initiating Hegelian dialectic on social norms by criticizing anything and everything they could. Through Moses Hess, Engels became a communist, believing that Hegelian dialectic's final form was in fact communism. Engels met Marx in 1844 in Cologne, Germany, and in 1845 they finished their first book, The German Ideology, in which they harshly critiqued the young Hegelians and other prominent socialists for rejecting violent revolution. It is at this point I see Engels and Marx as abandoning philosophy and dialectic in favor of dogma. Engels and Marx, in glorifying revolution, embraced violence as simultaneously inevitable and preferable. Yoko Taro's critique of Engels and Marx is one not on communism as a whole, nor on any preference for capitalism, but on a reasoned rejection of violence even in the face of convincing arguments for it, because it is ultimately irrational to prefer something that is ultimately Futile. The last leg of the quest repairing angles sees 2B and 9S talking about how the world used to be. What must it have been like to get to see the turning of day and night? We read Engels' journal of the serenity of nature as he sat limbless in that field, and we watch Engels choose death so as to remain happy with the world he's finally made peace with. The machine lifeform Engels is Yoko Taro imagining a Frederick Engels that stopped busying himself with the grueling double life of an industrial capitalist by day and obsessed revolutionary by night, an Engels that saw the beauty of the world and turned his passion into compassion, his war into peace. Thank you for watching my friends. If you enjoyed this video, if you found any value in it, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button and share it around with other people that you think might be interested. If you need something else to watch right now, you could also go back and watch our video on the philosophy of Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice in case you missed it. And look forward to our upcoming video on Yoko Taro's critique of another Marxist philosopher, Ernest Bloch, coming soon. Thank you again, and remember, stay true.